All right. Awesome. All right, excited to see you guys. I hope everybody can hear me and let me know. We are gonna start here in about a minute. All right. Awesome, okay. things. All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, as a note, I know a bunch of you wanted the replay and signed up to get the replay of this video, which I will send out tomorrow or Saturday at the latest. So there is still time to get the replay if you want to click on the link in the event description. Okay. All right, if you don't know me, I'm Maria Rieger. I'm uh, in the Resolving Triggers group, and I'm really excited to share this information with you guys today. I hope everybody can hear me. And um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about me, and then we're gonna go right into the, the content that we have today. Okay, um, I'm a mom, a wife, an attorney. That's my day job. I'm also an author, uh, a practicing astrologer, and a parenting coach. So I have written a book on Scorpio children and a book on Gemini children. And those books are helpful if you have a Scorpio or a Gemini child. They're also helpful if you are a Scorpio or Gemini adult who is reparenting yourself. And uh, that's largely what we're gonna talk about today, specifically how to use astrology um, and specifically the study of the birth chart in reparenting and healing. Okay, so all right. First of all, if you're new to astrology, the birth chart is a snapshot of the position of the planets at the moment of your birth. OK, so the planets are energies. The signs of the planets are how you particularly express those energies and the houses the planets fall in. The houses represent kind of themes of your life that are emphasized. So typically, the more planets you have in a house, the more strongly emphasized those themes will be in your life, whether they're relationships or material goods or sense of self and things like that. So the birth chart is largely about energy. So you've of course heard and you've experienced that, you know, sometimes you vibe with somebody's energy or you don't, that person has negative energy, their energy is very annoying to me, I don't vibe with them, or I, that person's energy really attracts me. I feel kind of magnetized by that person. That's because we're all putting out energy all the time and we're made up of energy. So the birth chart is a pattern of energy, your particular pattern, individual energy pattern and expression of energetic consciousness. And if you're familiar with the works of Dr. Joe Dispenza, you will be familiar with uh, these concepts, okay? This idea that we're always, we're made up of energy, always putting out energy. And you can change your energy too. It's, it's not that the birth chart is kind of finite and defined. It'll give you your individual energy pattern, but you as a chart holder can determine whether or not you're expressing kind of a lower octave or higher octave versions of that energy. It's what Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about, kind of higher octane, octave uh, versions of energy would be kind of love, abundance, gratitude, those kind of positive emotions. And the lower octave uh, would be kind of fear, um, lack, things like that, okay? So when you're talking about energetic expression as reflected in the birth chart, you could have energy in the birth chart, such as I'm a Gemini, I'll pick on Geminis. A Gemini person, Gemini people are typically very comfortable with using language, verbal and written expression of language. So you could, as a Gemini, use that to manipulate other people to the detriment of those people, or you can use that gift to communicate effectively in relationships to have stronger relationships. So that's what we're talking about. So the birth chart will tell you your energetic patterns, and then you can determine how you are specifically using those patterns, okay? I also wanna point out that most professional astrologers, certainly the most well-known ones, are very data-driven. They have undertaken over the years studies 
uh, analyses of different placements and patterns. And because of these constant patterns that we've seen, we've come to the conclusion that studying astrology and studying the birth chart has merit. And it especially has merit as a tool of self-discovery, which is what we're going to talk about today. Okay, so the title of this video is about reparenting and healing, right? So how to use astrology, particularly the study of the birth chart in that reparenting process. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about reparenting. I'm sure if you're in this group, you know what this is already. So reparenting is essentially giving yourself what you needed as a child now as an adult. You're basically reteaching things to yourself that maybe you did not get as a child. For example, maybe um, you not, didn't necessarily experience one singular traumatic event, but maybe you were parented in a way that led you to have or contributed to you having poor boundaries as an adult. Maybe you were not allowed to speak up for yourself as a child. Maybe you were not allowed to say no to your parents. And, um, you know, maybe you were not allowed to uh, uh, kind of self-advocate, self-champion. You were not allowed to explain yourself, right? You were not allowed to determine what you wanted to do. You had to do what your parents wanted you to do even when you were older. So sometimes, well, a lot of the time, that leads those kids to grow up into adults who have poor boundaries, who can't say no to people, who honestly think they have no say. They have to do what the other person wants. And doing that, you know, in doing that as a child, you learn to repress your wants and your needs. You learn to repress your authentic self. And now as an adult, you're kind of, in an extreme case, rediscovering yourself. And when I talk to a lot of adults who are reparenting themselves and healing themselves for the, from those things that they experienced as children, they're not even sure who they are. They're not sure who their authentic self is. They're not sure what their preferences are. When you ask them questions like, what do you want? What do you want out of life? They honestly don't know. And it's because they were so used to just doing what other people wanted them to do that they had to repress themselves and their own wants, needs, and things that they needed to do or needed to achieve or needed to be in order to lead, lead fulfilling lives. That's obviously what we want. We want you to lead fulfilling lives, however you define that, okay? So that's what we, we mean when we talk about reparenting, okay? So the birth chart is an excellent tool for reparenting because it is it gives you a guide for yourself, your authentic self. It will show you how you approach life, how you show up in relationships, your communication style, your learning style, whether you're emotionally stoic, whether you wear your emotions on your sleeve. It will, it will tell you these things so it's a great guide when you as an adult are starting this process of self-discovery. Okay. Um, it will also help you with your own radical self-acceptance, accepting yourself exactly as you are, who you are. And once you accept yourself, you can then accept other people, your partner, your child. So once you have a handle on your birth chart and you've accepted yourself, you can look at the charts of your children. You can look at the chart of your partner, of those closest to you. And you can then understand kind of how you relate to them based on your own energy, how you relate to their energy. And sometimes we relate very easily with another person because the energies are so similar and complementary. And sometimes it takes us an extra effort to relate to someone else because the energies are so different. Not bad necessarily. The energies are just different. Okay, their approach to life is different. Okay. Yeah, what usually happens, it's interesting, what usually happens is, you know, somebody gets in a relationship or somebody has, in my case, has a child, that's what happened to me, uh, what started this process, and they realize in relating to this other person that they have a ton to work on, they have all these triggers and all these things that they do, which are not necessarily emotionally healthy, that they kind of bring forward into the relationship, and then that's the impetus for them to do this healing. That's what happens a lot of the time. And, you know, there's this adage that you'll hear about and see a lot of um, that you need to heal yourself and before, you know, getting in a relationship with somebody else. Well, if we all waited until we were like totally 100% healed to have kids or be in a relationship, nobody would ever have kids or be in a relationship because that healing process is kind of never ending. It's a lifelong process. It's not that you just wake up one day and you're automatically, oh, I'm healed. I'm not triggered anymore. It's highly unlikely that that's going to happen. It's this lifelong 
process of making progress and then regressing a little bit and making progress and becoming conscious of this, okay? So it is okay to be a parent and still be working on these things, okay? Don't be too hard on yourself. It's okay to just be learning as you're going. Nobody knows what it's gonna be like to be a parent until you have your own kids. All right, so, um, all right, and I wanna point out uh, that this idea of radical self-acceptance when you when you accept yourself and then you accept other people as they are that does not mean that you are not allowed to have boundaries okay you can accept somebody a hundred percent exactly as they are and determine for whatever reason that either you cannot be around them you have to limit contact with them or you can only have certain kinds of contact with them or you cannot be in a relationship with them or in the case of your kids, you know, you need a break once in a while. Hey, I need a break. Hey, you know, I said, please don't touch me right now. I don't want to be touched. So it is okay to accept somebody as they are and still have your boundaries. It doesn't mean acceptance of another human being does not mean that you do not get to have boundaries. I want to make that really clear because I see parents asking that question all the time. All right. Okay, the big kind of thing I wanted to talk about in regard to the birth chart specifically is is when you're first looking at your birth chart as this tool of self-discovery. You're going to look at, and astrologers look at, when we're doing a birth chart reading, the first thing we look at are kind of the big, what we call the big three, the main three elements in the chart. And if you've done some astrology, studied some astrology, this will be familiar to you. So... We look at the sun sign, moon sign, and the rising sign. So the sun sign, everyone knows their sun sign. If you know your date of birth, you know your sun sign. It is, it is the sign that, that illuminates the entire chart. Almost everything in the chart is seen kind of through this filter of the sun sign. It is your approach to life. It is your default approach to life. So if you have an air sun sign like I do, your default approach to life is to be analytical, to be logical, to use um, logic and rationality to look at things kind of from a rational detached point of view. If you have a water sun sign, your default approach to life is through feelings, emotions, intuition. You make decisions largely based on things you intuit and emotions, okay, as opposed to logic. If you have a fire, if you have a fire sun sign, it's all about action. Sometimes you don't make a decision, you just act. That's the key word for fire energy is action okay they value action more than contemplation and being calculated and if you have an earth sun sign you're going to be intuitive you're going to um approach life more from this calculating angle you're going to calculate and plan before you make decisions it's more about the planning than about the action okay that's simplifying it but that's largely you know largely the um uh the elements if you hear my dogs barking, I apologize. It is really impossible to keep them quiet 100% of the time. Okay, so... Um, right, so the moon sign, when you're interacting with other people in one-to-one -one relationships, the moon sign is essential to know, especially with kids. The moon rules, or moon, your moon sign will tell you how you subconsciously react and act to and handle anything that touches your emotions what you need to feel emotionally safe how you respond emotionally how you handle your emotions are you explosive emotionally or do you clam up and withdraw that are you emotionally stoic what you we already said what you need to feel emotionally safe what do you need to recharge your energy very important a lot of people don't um unnecessarily think about that when they think about the moon sign and depending on the sign and house placement of the moon, it can indicate that the chart holder is either wears their emotions on their sleeves or um, is very emotionally reserved and private. And it takes a lot of digging to get to that person's kind of the heart of what they're thinking and feeling of emotionally. But very important because it'll tell you a lot about how you show up in a one-to-one -one relationship. So when you're talking about doing a relationship reading, either parent-child a romantic partner or a family member or a friend it's essential to get to the heart of what the moon sign is about for both people and the last big sign we want to talk about is the rising sign 
This is the sign that was rising over the eastern horizon at the moment you were born. The rising sign changes very quickly, so even kids that were, you know, born within half an hour or a couple hours of each other on the same day, same location, could have different rising signs. So the rising sign is how you automatically present yourself to other people and to the world. It is how you subconsciously automatically present yourself to the outside world. It is presented spontaneously. It's not an intentional presentation. It's um, how you spontaneously present yourself, how you spontaneously show up. And other people see that in a very obvious and immediate manner, okay? It is something that is, that is immediately seen by other people. So um, it is also could be explained as kind of one of the main biases of your point of view about life. So I'm a Libra rising, so I automatically kind of spontaneously present myself as somebody who is balanced, who seeks harmony, who seeks diplomacy, who seeks to incorporate all sides. And that is largely true, okay? And that is something that people usually see automatically, right? So that's the rising sign. So those are the three main elements that you're looking at when you're looking at understanding yourself. So very important, obviously, because they have to do with how you particularly express your own energy. Okay. And there's much more than that. When you do a, a chart reading, a natal chart reading, you'll get information about other personal planets, the slower moving planets, which are kind of similar placements for people of the same generation. Um, and that'll give you a lot of information. And it's always amazing to me how, how much people resonate clients resonate when you do an astrology reading for them. Okay, so those are the big things I wanted to go over and I wanted to share with you as you start your reparenting and healing journey and as you start looking at your natal chart, those are the things you wanna be considering, okay? It's about you understanding yourself, living your best life, living authentically, and that means living how you need to live for your own personal fulfillment not reaching mile, these milestones other people feel like they need to reach, not living the life that society expects from you or your family expects from you. It's living authentically so that you are fulfilled. So if you would like more information, I have opened up my calendar again for astrology readings, do natal chart readings, relationship readings, parent-child readings. So I will leave the link below if you're interested in that. If you're interested in my parent coaching program, I'll leave the link for that. Um, I also invite you to check out my YouTube channel. There's a bunch of free content. For example, uh, parent on parent-child dynamics with the different zodiac signs. Uh, there's a very, very active discussion there too. So you're welcome to check that out. That's all for free. And um, in my coaching program, we go over a bunch of stuff, including everything from how to create and maintain healthy boundaries and what specifically to say, what words to use, with how to maintain a strong attachment with your kids, so you have a more peaceful household and your kids naturally um, want to cooperate with you because they see the parent as a safe person. And that's what um, we all want parents, right? We want, want our kids to see us as safe, understand that we are there for them and have their backs. So um, that's what I wanted to talk about today. I really appreciate you joining us and I will be sending out the replay shortly.